I keep hearing that ChatGPT now has some legit tough competition. Now, this has been said before, specifically with Google Gemini recently. However, I think it's safe to say that Gemini needs some improving first. And this time, with this app, I think there's a real threat. And the app I'm talking about is Claude. And with the recent release of Claude 3, things are about to get interesting. Claude is a family of foundational AI models that can be used in a variety of applications. Look at all of these amazing capabilities. So this is nothing like we're not familiar with, especially if you're familiar and you use ChatGPT. And then right here, here on Claude's website, it states that there's three different intelligence levels. Now today I'll be using Sonnet. Sonnet is actually going to be free. I don't have a paid plan to Claude yet. And today will be a deciding factor. Can Claude 3 compete with ChatGPT when it comes to prompt generation and analyzing and producing good prompts? So let's compare these two heavyweights to see how they perform against each other with some of the best prompt examples. Okay, so here we are in Claude. Here is the user interface that you'll be introduced with when you first land in their prompt workspace. So here are just some of the new things that you could do when it comes to Claude's realization of images, understand objects and how they're used, convert UI design to front end code, and then transcribe handwritten notes. If I select this refresh button, you could also see recommend style improvements, generate a recipe from a dish, and then understand complex equations. Again, that could all be done by simply uploading a document or an attached image. So the first thing I wanna test Claude with is being able to provide it with a prompt and basically turn Claude 3 into a prompt engineering machine, similar to what we've always done with ChatGPT. I'm gonna give it a prompt, specifically a prompt that can generate powerful images with tools like Leonardo AI, Midjourney, or Dali. I'll use one for Leonardo AI today, and when I feed it this prompt, I'm going to be expecting Claude 3 to give me back multiple prompts, each with a different unique style and characteristic based off of one keyword. And then from there, we're going to test out a few more prompt generators and then really put Claude through the test. We'll do the same thing in ChatGPT so we can see a comparison side by side and see which one can perform better or if they they can both do an equally good job. And what I'm going to do is I'm in AI art prompts right now. These are going to be all my prompts to generate some amazing images. What I'll do is I'm going to head over here to the prompt engineer tab up here at the top. Okay. And this is where I'm going to find one of the prompts I want to provide it. So the prompt I want to give it is this one that's for Leonardo AI. If I click to expand it, we can see what this prompt is actually going to do. I'm going to give it this prompt and based off of my keyword, it's going to produce instantly eight different prompts, all with these different styles. You see right here. Now remember, this video, like every other video, will always contain links in my description. So anytime I share a prompt or a prompt generator, there will always be a link in my description to access every prompt that we're going to be going over, in addition to getting access to any prompt database that I have available. So don't forget to check the links in the description. So back over here on Claude, here we go right here. Now, although this is a long prompt, it doesn't matter, simply just go ahead and then type it in. Here we go. It's typed in and now hit that send button. Okay. And then instantly Claude goes to work. Yes, I understand. Please provide the subject or theme you would like me to generate. What I'll try first is I'm going to give it just a simple keyword. I'm going to say tiger. Okay. If I just select tiger, hit enter, let's see what it can generate for us. And then as you could see in real time, just like that, it's immediately providing me with those eight different prompts specific to my keyword, but also the style my prompt generator has. So let's look at the very last one. For example, Fortnite style, a stylized tiger with a vibrant cartoonish design reminiscent of the Fortnite aesthetic, bodily covered with saturated hues. Okay. Then we can go all the way back up to a cinematic style. Awesome. So the next step is I'm going to go to chat GPT. Let's see what sort of prompts it can produce with this same exact generator. I'll give it the same exact keyword tiger and then we'll take some of these prompts and then head over to leonardo ai to see what sort of images that these two powerhouses can generate for us and now i have this prompt paste in here into chat gpt let me go ahead and then submit this one i'll use the same exact keyword i'll also say tiger okay so here we go immediately this one starts it starts with number one down to number two bioluminescent cinematic and then all the way down here in Fortnite. We have both of these platforms giving us these prompts relatively quickly. Now let's head over to Leonardo AI and then paste these prompts in. If I head back over to Leonardo AI, check these out right here. So these tiger images, these first ones that you see, these were generated with Claw 3 based off the prompt generator. This did a fantastic job. Okay, we have that one. And then we also have these right here. Amazing job. So just as good as a job in generating these prompts as ChatGPT. Okay, if I scroll back up, look at these Fortnite style 
style ones. Again, pretty good job. Now these images can all be predicated based on the actual fine-tuned model and presets I use. But you can see right here, I used Albedo Base, and then I used Dynamic, and then even on this one right here, this is a 3D render preset. But again, definitely a Fortnite style. So if you're not familiar with Fortnite, it's actually a very popular video game that you could see right here. So look at the two images, and then you can make the deciding factor if these do indeed look like a Fortnite style tiger. Okay, so I think so far everything has done a good job. But now let's compare those to the prompts that ChatGPT provided us. And then these two rows right here is exactly just that. Now, here are the prompts for Fortnite style that we got from ChatGPT. Again, these are highly impressive as well. Looks very good. Almost looks like a Pixar DreamWorks style prompt. That's sort of what Fortnite characters do look like. And then again, here is one that we got from ChatGPT for a cinematic style tiger in the savannah with the sunset. Again, amazing job. It looks like they both do a very good job creating prompts based off of a prompt generator for us. But now the next thing I want to do is let me take some of these images. I then want to upload these into Claude directly and then ask Claude, please provide a prompt that will generate an image that looks just like this. Right here, I'm gonna go ahead and then download this image. Once it's downloaded, I'm gonna come back over here into Claude, scroll all the way down, and you can see I have one message remaining until 6 p.m. Since I am on the free plan, it's gonna be extremely limited. So let's go ahead and then attach this image from my documents folder. It's gonna be attached. You can see in the bottom right-hand corner, it's thinking. Once my image is attached, now I'm gonna ask Claude, please describe this image and create a prompt that will generate it using tools like stable diffusion and then here it goes right away it says this is a highly detailed photorealistic image and then to generate an image like this using stable diffusion or other ai tools here is a potential prompt and then just like that i'm highlighting it there is the prompt, a highly detailed photorealistic close-up portrait of a magnificent Bengal tiger facing forward with an intense gaze. Okay, so it did a pretty good job recognizing the image and it gave me a prompt for it. Okay, let's do that same thing. Let's come back over here in the GPT-4. Okay, I have my image uploaded here. I'll go back to Claude and let me copy my prompt from this one and then paste this in the chat GPT. Okay, please describe this image and then create a prompt that will generate this similar sort of image. It gives us the description of the image and then it says now I'll create a prompt and then it does just that here is the prompt that we got from chat GPT and then if we do a side-by-side -side comparison we could look at the two prompts that it gave us okay so on the left hand side there is the one for Claude highly detailed photorealistic close-up okay and then the one in chat GPT I have it highlighted over here in gray. You could look at the two prompts and then you could see that they are incredibly similar and they both produce similar looking images. Okay, so as you can see here, I've actually exhausted my limit in Claude today. And it says that in about three hours, my tokens will reset. In order to continue, I would have to subscribe to the pro plan. And then you can see here that Claude Pro is $20 a month. So what I'll do is I'll wait a few hours. I'll try this again with some of the other prompts. That will then determine if it's actually gonna be worth spending another $20 a month for another AI subscription app. Okay, so now moving on, let's try something else pretty cool. Now, look down here in this box right here. It says you can generate a recipe from a dish. So just by simply uploading a photo, Claude should be able to determine what specific ingredients you might need to make that exact dish. There's my image right here. Now, between me and you, this dish is lemon pepper chicken. Simple enough. So right here, Without telling Claude what this dish is, let's simply ask it. Suggest a recipe for this dish. Okay, so by the looks of this, it got everything right except the meat. It is not a fish filet, it's actually a chicken dish. It's actually lemon pepper chicken, but everything else it did get right. This appears to be lemon and herb crusted fish filet served with a side of spaghetti tossed with olive oil or butter. And then here is the actual recipe. Here is everything you will need to make this specific dish. Now looking closely at it, everything is 100% accurate, except it just needs to replace fish with chicken. Now let's bring it over to ChatGPT and see how good of a job ChatGPT can do and if it got the actual meat right. Okay, suggest a recipe for this dish. Give it a few moments to get everything together. Now, from the looks of it, immediately it got it right. It was able to quickly determine that this is lemon pepper chicken served with spaghetti. I'm pretty impressed with both of them, but if you want to score things on technicalities, in this case, ChatGPT did do a little bit of a better job. It got the recipe 100% accurate. It knew it was a chicken breast, but nonetheless, still good by Claude. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is something that people like to use quite a bit, and that's going to be creating product descriptions 
things for a product photo. So let's say for an example, you have an e-commerce website and you sell items, but you really can't come up with what sort of product description you should use. That's where this is going to come in. So what we'll do this time is we're going to start with the same thing. Select that paper clip. Okay. Go to your downloads folder or select any image you want to download. So right here in this case, I have a pair of Beats by Dre headphones. Okay. What I'll do now is just say, create a product description based off this photo. Okay. So there's my main prompt. Please create a product description based off this photo. There are my Beats by Dre headphones. Okay. There's the description, but we want an actual product description to put on our e-commerce website. So I need to change my prompt up a little bit. So that's what I did right down here. So instead of saying a product description, I want to give it a little bit more of a push to understand exactly what I'm looking for. So down here, I just said, suggest three possible one line descriptions for this product. This isn't the product I want. So let me go ahead and add mine right back to it. There it is. Okay, now suggest three possible one line descriptions for this product. Let's go ahead and then select it and then see what this can come up with. And then just like that, there we go. Sleek and stylish noise canceling headphones with a bold red and black color scheme. And then you can see right here, we get two others and they all look pretty good. Simple, clear, concise, and very good. All right, now let's go back to ChatGPT and then try the same thing, okay? I'm gonna upload my photo. And in all fairness, I'll go ahead and try this two times. I'll try this prompt I used the first time with Claude, even though it didn't get it accurate. I wanna see what ChatGPT can first do with it. So I'll paste it down here. Please create a product description based off this photo, okay? We'll see if it gives us a full paragraph description or if it can come up with one-liners and that's what we're looking for. So here it is right here. ChatGPT is doing the same exact thing that Claude did where it's given us just a generic full description of what this product actually is. So it is a little bit more detailed, so that's pretty cool, but not quite what we're looking for quite yet. So let me go back over here to Claude and now type in this second prompt instead. Okay, suggest three possible one line descriptions for this product. I'm gonna copy this. Okay, I'm gonna open up a brand new chat, upload my headphones again, and now paste this one in. Okay, here we go. Let's see what this comes up with now. Again, what we're looking for are three one liners. And let's see. Okay, it looks like number one is very similar. So Claude says, sleek and stylish noise canceling headphones with a bold red and black color scheme and similar, but not identical. So the first one, sleek over ear headphones with a bold red and black color scheme for premium sound quality and style. Okay, so Claude was a little less descriptive. Comfortable high performance audio experience wrapped in a striking red accented design. Let's look at number two over here. Comfortable over ear design, that's pretty good and then pre and then number three premium audio gear combining cutting edge technology catching aesthetic okay so the common denominator looks like notice the topic is similar number three for an example uses the word aesthetics and then claude same exact thing in number three the last word is catching aesthetic so pretty cool good job for both okay so now the next one i want to try is recommended style improvement based off of a photo so here's my photo right here okay what three things should i add to my deck i want it to be modern and welcoming that's the example that claude gives us so let's do this let's replace this photo with something else okay Okay. What I'm going to do instead is add an AI design I made in Leonardo AI. So here's the image right here I made in Leonardo AI. I'm going to go ahead and upload this image and then ask it a simple question. How do I make this home feel more traditional and more inviting? Okay, let's see what it can come up with. So that's what I'll do. Okay, so my prompt says, what three things should I do to make my living room more inviting and traditional? Okay, there's my prompt, but let me add the picture. So I'm over here in my generated photos, and I think it was this one right here. Let me select it and then just make sure. Okay, there we have it. The photo has been successfully added. Now let's go ahead and then generate this and see what this can come up with. While we're waiting on this, we're going to head right over and do the same exact thing in ChatGPT. All right, so then here we go. To make your living room more inviting and traditional, here are three suggestions. And then it says incorporate warm, rich colors, add wooden accents such as a fireplace, mantle, coffee table, or built-in bookshelves, introduce patterned fabrics with floral and other things. Okay, pretty cool. Let's take the same exact prompt and now go over to Chat GPT, paste this in, and then actually attach this image as well. Okay, there's my image, and let's see what Chat GPT can come up Again. with. Add warm lighting, incorporate traditional decor, and then use rich textiles and patterns. Okay, so very similar, but also a little bit different. Very good job. So moving on to the next thing. The next thing is I want to upload a PDF, a long and lengthy PDF, okay? Let me pull it up over here, okay? This is a long and lengthy PDF. If I'm looking at it, it has nine pages. 
I'm going to upload this whole entire thing discussing on-page optimization on a WordPress website, okay? So I'm going to upload this whole entire PDF. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, summarize this PDF file. So again, let me type it in right here. Here's my prompt, summarize this PDF file. And now I need to attach my actual PDF. Okay, so there's my PDF. It's now attached. Let's go ahead and then select generate. While we're waiting on this, we're going to do the same thing over here in chat GPT. Okay, so I said summarize this PDF file. Okay, here it is in chat GPT. I have my PDF uploaded. Summarize this PDF file and now select generate on this. Now let's go back to Claude. This PDF provides a detailed standard operating procedure, SOP, for performing on-page optimization on a WordPress post using the Rank Math plugin. Okay, it covers the following key topics. So very short and simple, but if I look at all five of these, it did summarize it perfectly. Okay, so simple, but also correct at the same time. Now let's head back over here to ChatGBT. It did the same exact thing, but in this case, it gives us just a paragraph and we don't have any bullet to points to kind of make it clearer and easier to read. So nonetheless, it still did summarize it. It did it very quickly and it did it efficiently, but however, it might not be long enough. I'll give this to Claude just because it broke it down a little bit easier. The next thing we we'll wanna do is I'm gonna test both these models out to see if it can help me learn a specific language, okay? So here's the prompt I'm gonna use right here. Help me practice my Spanish vocab. For every turn, message me with a single Spanish word that I should translate to English. Start with a very easy word. If I get it right, make the next word more difficult. If I get it wrong, explain what the correct answer was and reduce difficulty for the next turn. You can include emoji hints to help me. Okay, so there it is, it did that. So it just basically right here, it just reiterates what I wanted to do and I just simply said, okay. And now here it is, the one word, manzana. Okay, I know what that word is. That is the word apple. Well, unfortunately, it looks like I just exceeded my prompts again in Claude. Luckily, we got through a lot of it. However, that is the downfall with the free plan. You get a very limited amount of messages you can use daily. But with that said, you could see that Claude at least understood what I was wanting and it did give me my first word, manzana which means Apple. However, let's just go to ChatGPT fairly quickly just to see what this prompt could do. So I did the same thing right here. Here's my prompt, I'll paste it in. Now hit generate. Let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Okay, so I like the emoji. It gives me a hint in the form of an emoji. So perro, that means dog. So let me type in my response right here. Okay, nice, nice. Okay, that's blue. So I like this back and forth. I'm curious to see, I'm sure Claude could have got it right, um, but I like the back and forth. Okay, here we go. So I like the hints especially that star right there. It's easy enough. Okay, so for this next one, I'm just going to make something up. I'm going to put something wrong on purpose just to see what it comes up with. So I'm just going to say bike, even though I know this is wrong, but let's see what happens if I get it, if I get it wrong. So it basically says, I'm sorry, this is incorrect. And then it says that this means to develop. That's interesting. Okay. And then here goes the next one where it says, we're going to go with one that's more easy. So this, in this case, it's cat. Okay. So there's gato. And then there is the actual emoji of a cat. So let's try this again. We'll go one more and see if I can get a harder one. All right. So then the next one, biblioteca, uh, that means, uh, that could either mean books or library, but I'm going to say library. Let's see if I got this one right. Oh, correcto, excelente. Okay. And so it looks like that it can keep going on and on and on. You could play this game all day or all night. So that's the cool thing. Okay. Well, Claude did a very good job. It is quite impressive. And I do think that it's going to give chat GPT a run for its money, but is it a significant threat or is it even better than chat GPT? I do think Claude is going to give it a run for its money. But you'll notice, according to Claude's webpage, it does specify that it is much more powerful than ChatGPT. However, in this case, we are using the free Claude plan. And to be fair, we're not using their most powerful one, Opus. So in all fairness, I was using GPT-4 for many of my things. So I think as it goes on, as it continues to improve, I'll have to revisit this and actually get the paid version of Claude. That way, we can give it a true test to really see if it can power through some of the more complex type of prompts. But tell me what you guys think. Have you tried Claude? Have you tried both? What are your thoughts? But thank you so much for watching this video. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because you'll be the first to know when all these videos come out. Until then, we'll see you next time.